Hello everyone and welcome back to part three of our NPC AI series where we take a look at the Mass AI plugin and how we can use it to create NPCs that are dynamic in our environment. Now in the first two parts we've set up our zone graphs and our NPCs to be spawned in but we're now going to go through the process of making them uh, move around and avoid each other and avoid us the player too so it looks more natural and gives a much more lively feeling to the environment. So let's get started and take a look. So the last time we were here, we got our zone graph set up. We've got our data assets spawning in, but we're now going to make it work and make them move around using state trees. Now you have to use state trees for your mass AI system. They don't work with behavior trees. So to do this, all we're going to do is we're going to go back to our NPC config and we're going to add a new trait and we're going to add the state tree uh, trait. If you open this up, you're going to ask you for a state tree. It obviously say none. You can click on this and you're going to choose a new state tree and we'll name this one. I'll put my NPC here. Um, NPC state tree. And you're going to click mass behavior. Okay, and it's in there now. So if you want to open that up, you double click on the thing there. And you just want to make sure that your schema is set to mass behavior. It should be because we selected it from the creation menu, but it should be there. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is, well, let me explain what you're seeing here, first of all. So in the middle, we've got this actual state tree. State trees are just like another form of behavior trees, indicating how um, AI will navigate and move around and do stuff and transition between different states. Um, but it's what Mass uses to handle this. On the right-hand side, you've got your details panel, which you only select new uh, states and, and things like that. You can change their settings. On the left-hand side, you've got your different parameters and like variables, things like that you can change on the state tree and manipulate it. So the first thing you do is make a new state for this. So click on add state, and we're going to do this one as wander. So this could be them just wandering around. And then we're going to go to, on the right-hand side, and you'll see tasks. And we click on new task. And from the empty folder, you're going to go to ZG for zone graph, and we'll do path follow. As you can see, oh no, sorry, we're going to do uh, find wonder target we'll do that so find wonder target first of all and this task if you expand it open and expand it open again you'll see you can assign what tags you want to use so it's going to find a wonder target inside the zone graph that you've assigned to it so we're going to do pedestrian and high class you that and we're going to add another task to it and this next task is going to be path follow and we're going to open this up and we are going to change the target uh, location to ZG find wonder target and then wonder target location. So basically it does this task first and then it sends that task result over to the ZG path follow. So it'll follow along the path. Uh, movement style, we'll leave it as invalid. Speed, so we'll leave it like that as well. Now with state trees, you do have to tell it what to happen uh, what will happen after the state is finished. So once it's done this wonder and does this, you'll see it's missing transition. We just want it to restart and just keep going in a loop. So you can go to transitions on the right hand side, add a transition and open this up. And you want to change this, oh, change this to be on state completed transition to root. Okay. And that means it's going to go back to the start and go back through the, the state tree again. So it's a very simple state tree, hit compile and that should be okay. So let's now go into our game and push simulate. And now we can see our characters can move around the scene just fine and are following the paths. Let me just turn down my camera speed a bit so you can see that a bit clearer. And notice what they're going to do as they walk around. They're going to avoid each other as well. As such. At the moment, they're not animating. That's because the animation graph we're using is the ABP Manny, which for AI doesn't really work. So we're going to tweak that and fix that so they can move around a bit more lively. So let's go into the ABP Manny animation blueprint. And in ABP Manny, the thing that causes this problem is this thing down here where it says get movement component, get current acceleration. It doesn't understand that when it's an AI character. So the simplest thing to do is just to just plug this into here. Okay, so it's, or, or you can just turn it off and always make it should move. However you want to do it. 
I'm going to just do ground speed in there. That should be fine. And if I hit simulate now, they'll bulk. Okay, so if we go into the game now, we can see our mass AI wandering around. And you can sort of debug these the same way you do normal AI debugging. If you push the apostrophe key next to your return key on your keyboard, you'll see the mass data working. You can sort of see like the mass AI and you can see like where it is in relation to the actual actor itself. See what arrows they're trying to move or where you're orientating. And you can see the smooth orientation is the big yellow line, um, etc. And you also see like avoidance as well. So if I was to push uh, shift V, um, they will now show um, their, I'm going to do shift O as well. You'll see the avoidance they have. Now at the moment they're going to just avoid each other, uh, not me. So let's just see that in action if I go up to it. Uh, also, the purple one refers to the one I was looking at when I pushed the button. But, um, looks like it's about to collide with this one. Oh, no, too too close. Should make it a bit more busy. Mm, let's go to some more over here. Mm, nope. <laughs> Just trying to get them to line up. Uh, definitely should make it more busy. All right, there you go. But anyway, you can see you can see some debug information. Okay, uh, you can see the shift C. You can see the path. Uh, you should see the path. And show shapes. Uh, shift S. Nope, it doesn't want to show it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so the, uh, the I say mass is still experimental. Some things don't work, um, but. There you go. You can see information coming through just fine. Um, and so the main thing we want to add now is make it so they avoid us. Uh, so they'll avoid each other. They won't bump into each other. Um, trying to get an example of that playing. Uh, let's actually increase the count here, actually. Let's go to, to our spawner. And change the count from 10 to 50. And hit play. Okay, so now we've got a lot more of them running around. And you should see that they all like swerve out the way of each other and avoid each other. Yeah, they shouldn't really collide or bump into each other. But it won't be the same for me. So for me, they will just walk into me and it will basically desync them. Because if I go into here, for example, and I block the path of this one, you can see the mass AI circle is still moving, but he isn't. He is now back here. And so they're out of sync. So this one wants to move out of the way. You see it avoiding stuff. Um, but the mesh is no longer in sync with that location. Yeah. And that's because we're not syncing the transforms of it. Um, now, rather than syncing transforms, we're going to make them so they avoid our player. Now, if you want them to avoid things that are other than other mass AI actors, you need to create a new data asset for your player character. So we're going to create in here a new data asset. Choose a mass agent or mass entity config asset. And we'll do player config. And open this up. Now this one's a lot simpler than the other one that we've done. Um, the traits you're going to use in here are pretty basic. So on the one here, we're going to do, uh, um, I believe it's agent capsule collision sync. And... We also want to have it be part of the navigation obstacle pathway like that. So navigation obstacle means that this itself is going to be an obstacle and the capsule collision is obviously our capsule. And if I open up the thing here, we want to change the capsule collision sync to go from actor to mass. So it tells a mass system where we are. Okay. And the sync transform, we do want to update. We want to keep it like that. So with that, and then go to our player character, which is this one here. I'm going to go to add and search for mass agent. And on the right hand side, we're going to choose our parent class, which is the D, our parent asset, which is going to be the DA player config. And that's it. We're going to hit compile, save. And now these guys should also walk around me and not walk into me. So let's turn on debug. It's a little bit easier to see this in action. But you can see him like swerving around me instead. And you can see the avoidance is the uh, the line. The, the, you see the little, uh, I don't know how to describe it, the maroon arrow. 
that's where they want to go. And it's just like keeping my where they are and they're just adjusting their location based on that. So now these guys will avoid me as I run down this sort of corridor, basically, of people. Which is pretty neat. Okay. And avoidance settings are still available on the NPC, so you can still change how they avoid me and, and things like that. But we can easily make characters that walk around and navigate through all these elements. Which is pretty neat. So there you go, we've now got our NPCs avoiding us as well as each other, and it, things are starting to look really nice. But what I'm going to do in the next part is I'm going to add some variants and extra behaviours to our NPCs, so they're not just wandering around, they're actually doing something and reacting to your presence. So we're going to take a look at that in the next part over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons for their continued support in the channel. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.